Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. Um, this video is going to be um, tips and tricks on how to move to Australia. So my current situation is that I'm on a work and holiday visa in Australia. Um, so I've looked on YouTube and there's there's a lot of advice on like how to get ahead of the game, how to be, like what you need to do before you come. But I'm gonna give you some things that basically I wish I knew before coming out here that would have made my transition so much easier and so much smoother, particularly for work and holiday visas who are looking for work. Um, so they're gonna need long-term accommodation, a job, everything like that. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. But first off, if you're on a work and holiday visa, you're gonna be looking for a job. So the first thing you wanna do when you get here is you need to apply for a tax number and you need to get a bank account. Um, Tax numbers is crucial. You need to get this or you won't be able to. I think you can work for up to four weeks without a tax number and then they charge you crazy amounts in tax. So obviously we don't want that. So first thing you wanna do, I'll put the links in the description because I massively mugged myself off when I came here. There's, my friend sent me a link that was to my tax number and I had to pay 50 bucks. So it's like 25 pounds. Um, so I was like, okay, fine. I got it, all good. And then when I've met people at work, they were like, no, we didn't have to pay money, like it's free. So I'll save you some time, I'll do the research for you and I'll put in the free code to get your tax number to save you 50 bucks because, um, yeah, I'm so annoyed about that. But it's fine, I'm over it. Um, so on the same aspect of that, you also wanna get yourself a bank account. Super easy, you can literally just go into any bank account, any like bank branch, I I'm with Commonwealth is like the most popular one here just because they have the app, so it's super easy. Um, there's a few different accounts you can get. I think I just got the basic one. Um, they don't charge you, they don't charge you, no, it's free. They, there's some rule that you've got to get more than 2000 AUD put in your account or you'll get charged a certain percent, but it's a tiny, tiny percent. And if you're working, obviously, you're gonna be getting more than 2,000 AUD anyway, because that's 1,000 English pounds. So yeah, tax number, bank account, that's your baseline. So the second advice or tip um, is to join up with agencies straight away. So, well, straight away, once you've got your bank <laughs> sorted and your tax number sorted, because you can work without your tax number, like I said, for four weeks, but you're obviously gonna need a bank account because they can't pay you into your English one. They do need you to have an Australian bank account. Um, so agencies are the best way that you're gonna try and you're gonna find work here because on working holiday visas, you are restricted to only having a job for six months on one visa and then you have to move on to a next one. When you sign up to an agency, they'll reach out to you and you'll go for an interview with them. It's not really an interview, it's just to literally see how you present yourself and how you talk because then they'll know what sort of roles you'll be more suitable for and obviously to get to know your background. Um, they suggest that you sign up to two to three agencies. I don't think that's right because some agencies, I mean all agencies obviously, they have quotas to meet for signing new people up. So they'll be like, yes, absolutely, we've got, we can get you work, just come and sign up with us and then we'll get in contact with you when we've got a job but they'll never get in contact with you because they don't have any available roles. I think I signed up to about five or six um, and I will always sign up for more. Like, it's there's, there should be no minimum. Um, just so long as you keep all the agencies up to date once you get a role, to be like, I'm not available for X amount of time, then you'll be fine. Um, how agencies work are they have contract roles come to them. So say, these can vary really from like one day roles as a receptionist for example to like a six month contract that will literally max out your allowance of what of your work in on your visa once you've finished your contract you'll then be available for another contract so it's just like a ball that keeps on rolling it's really good you get paid weekly um and the jobs vary hun like they vary so much um the jobs that i've had from them so far have been receptionist and administration because that's what I've said, that's what I've got experience in, that's what I said, like, I'll be happy doing that for anyone. Uh, if you do want to go down the seek route, if you're not comfortable with 
approaching agencies, um, then what I would recommend is that you have a look on the, it's like on the tab, you can, you can basically categorize the jobs that you're looking for. And it's very important that you put in this into the specification contract and casual work because then that will filter out um, all of the roles that are like 12 month contracts that you're not going to be applicable for. Um, they're not going to be applicable for you. That's what I meant. This will filter them all out so then you'll get given the contract roles so you actually will have a shot at getting these roles. Um, that's where I went wrong when I first started applying for jobs. I was just applying on Seek non-stop and I was realizing that I was getting rejection after rejection because I literally don't have the rights, the working rights to get any of those jobs. So save yourself some time and categorize it for contract and casual work because then those employers know that you're on a work and holiday visa and they know your restrictions already. My third tip slash advice um, is regarding housing situation. So obviously once you when you come over to Australia, you're gonna be looking for a house um, and you're gonna be wanting flatmates probably if you're on your own or if you're in a couple um so what we did was that we found an airbnb for about a week we pre-booked that before we got here um and then whilst we were looking whilst we were in the airbnb that we used that week to, try to find um houses basically there is a website called flatmates and it's pretty self-explanatory it's either people looking for flatmates to pair up to, to find a house with, or houses who are looking for flatmates. Um, we didn't actually have very much luck on that website. I don't know why, um, I just never got the hang of it really, and I never was a massive fan of it. Um, we actually used Facebook um, to find free rooms in Sydney. Um, there are lots of Facebook groups that you can join before moving out here that you'll find highly beneficial. Um, they'll just give you like little tips and tricks that like you won't even think about. Um, even if it's like where to get a good Chinese or where, where can I go for a drink or something like that. Um, so just type in like, for example, I'm one that's English in Sydney. I know there's an Irish in Sydney. There's just type into Facebook and and you'll find them. They'll come. You'll come across them. And there's thousands of members, and they always put in little bits of advice. And along with that, they'll be like, "There's a house free here. There's a there's a flat free here." And that's actually how we came across um, the house we live in at the moment. I found it a lot more useful the Facebook groups rather than the actual flatmates. But that's obviously completely depends on the person. So. Finally, my fourth and final tip um, is about food and drink because, you know, it's a it's an amazing place to live. There's so many amazing places to go for food and drinks. You want to you don't want to waste your time going to a bad place, basically. Um, so, what I wish I knew before moving out here was that there's um, a website called Broadsheet. Um, I had no idea about this. It's very similar to like. TripAdvisor for the UK, but it's all food and drinks basically, and it's sort of like they have hidden gems on there, and that this is for all over. Um, I th I'm pretty sure Broadsheet is all over Australia. So I remember we used it when for my birthday when we were in Melbourne, and we found like a secret bar on it, and then we went to the secret bar, and we would have no idea like about that place otherwise. So that's just a super quick tip. Um, if you're a foodie or you like going out for drinks, I would re definitely recommend Broadsheet. There's loads of great suggestions on there and you'll save yourself some time and money from not going to rubbish places, basically. <laughs> That's pretty much it for my video today. Um, I hope you found the tips useful. Um, I feel like I definitely wish I knew all of this before coming out to Australia. It would have made, like I said, my transition much easier. Um, so I hope it can do the same for you. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.